Nasty. Mm. Can you name three types of oysters found in Australia? Uh, Sydney Rock, uh, Pacific. Um, there's a flat oyster. Um, what else have we got? Uh, well, let's throw. Let's see how many you can that's get. That's good. Let's see how that's many four. you can get. What? Is that three or Sydney four? Rock, three. Oh, three. Sydney Rock, flat. Pacific, flat. There's one called like an Angostini or something or a weird name. Yeah, Ang- Angazi. Angazi. Yep. There it is. Oyster. There's, there's uh, the one, you know, the ones we have in the lake, mm. those big razor clams. Are mm. they a member of the oyster family? It's not on the list. I'll give you a half a point. All right. Yeah, oh, they're not, not um, quite. Slightly well, different. Oyster. I reckon, look, you've, you've surpassed it. Okay. The one that Cass, I was wondering if he got, which no one would expect you to, but there's a bit of movement going around the old Richmond River oyster. Oh, there's. A, I didn't realise there's. But a it's not river called river. that. But oh. but there's a. Is that right, um, Cass? That there's a bit of chat in and around that. Yeah. Look, that's been an exciting um, study for our our Richmond chapter members over the last few years. It, it's good and it's bad because the the Richmonds had such bad water quality for the past forty years. So it's been forty years since our oysters have made babies in the Richmond River. Um, but now we have this new oyster that's emerged uh, amongst the bad water quality. So it's actually evolved over the last 40 years. So it's a brand new species. We're putting it through its paces at the moment. It's still a rock oyster like the Sydney rock, but it's not a Sydney rock. It's something different. Wow. Um, we, we're putting it through its paces um, uh, genetics-wise with um, two different unis here, Southern Cross and Griffith Uni, and uh, trying to discover, you know, how that adaptation has happened and you know what it means for the oyster industry in in new south wales because it's it's, cool. it's very resilient it's very resilient to bad water quality the bad water quality causes that qx disease um and and so on so mm. yeah a resilient oyster is really important so pretty exciting news here from and, the region oh, last last time we caught up cass was at after and yes. you were there working with ozfish um and and you had those sort of tanks set up where you had the oysters in the water which is really cool if if you've never seen this i'm sure um there'd be a video of it somewhere on absolutely the yeah, side yep, or something on other, YouTube, yep. where you put that filthy dirty water in the tank with the oysters and how quickly and efficiently they made that water crystal clear was just amazing so it shows you how what a great filter for feeder not only a filter feeder but a filter filtering system they yep. have for water quality and it shows you how important that oysters are in that respect and i yeah. i must admit visually that's just the greatest way i've seen it shown it was unreal how, how yeah you did the rounds and came back and the oysters had done all the work i did that was amazing and you still owe me a coffee by the way so yeah. <laughs> uh, for those following um along at home pearl oyster leaf oyster milky oyster black lip oyster, oh, black oyster. Lip. i should have got that one well you didn't sorry that's all right and um spiny rock oyster look you've done pretty well yeah, but what other questions? Is that it? No, no. That oh, was cool. just the oyster questions. All right. mate. Well, I've so got two down. out of three so far, so yeah. I'm, try- I'm trying to figure We'll, we'll go a few that. more and then we'll let Cassie go mm. get back to what she does best, and that is basically creating habitat projects around Australia. Here's one for you, fun one. Mm-hmm. What stores more carbon, 